Hello YouTube, so today we're going to be doing a video on this circuit that we have right here. So this circuit, if you could see it, it is actually an, uh, an ultrasonic sensor. Uh, and what I'm doing is I have created an... I've created a circuit using analog components that will use this ultrasonic sensor and it will output a voltage uh, which correlates with the distance that the ultrasonic sensor detects. So just, so just to demonstrate this on the oscilloscope, we're going to put my hand close to the ultrasonic sensor and you can see that the voltage will go down. It's kind of hard to uh, keep it my hand in the place where the ultrasonic sensor will detect it, but yeah, you could see that the voltage has gone down and now I can bring my hand farther away. It's going up, if I go a little bit farther, it, it's still kind of bumpy in the voltage, but the average voltage for all of you just use a paper. So we're going farther away, farther away, farther away, let's go closer in, farther away, closer in, farther away, closer in, real close, and then back to detecting the wall. So yeah, you, you can see when it's farther away, the voltage is higher. When it's closer in, the voltage is lower. And that is what is seen with this circuit. So to actually see what's going on, what this circuit uh, consists of several components. So basically you have uh, your 55F5 timer right here, and this is generating a, a pulse, and that's going to the trigger uh, the trigger of the of the ultrasonic sensor. So you can see it has a trigger and an echo. And uh, what's happening is the echo uh, goes to these capacitors right here. And uh, this capacitor and resistor form a uh, a uh, a uh, RC integrator circuit. So uh, what happens is that the trigger will send a pulse out when the five 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 timer pulses. The trigger will send a pulse out. And then the other thing will detect a pulse back in. And then the length of that pulse will correlate with the distance. Uh, the uh, longer the pulse width, uh, the, uh, the farther away and the shorter the pulses are, the closer it is. So let's just go into a, a drawing that I made, or schematic. So I... Uh, yeah, so here's how I designed it. Uh, you could see that the 555 timer, what it does is, uh, this is how the circuit is set up, and uh, this is done in, in a very particular way, way with uh, these dials right here. So these dials will control the flow of current, so when it goes this way, it'll go through this resistor, and if it goes this way, it only goes through this resistor. Uh, this is, uh, so that we could have a duty cycle on the timer of less than 50%, which is kind of needed because uh, basically what, what the ultrasonic sensor wants is it wants a, uh, a 10 uh, microsecond pulse. Uh, well, with the components right here, we're giving it a, like, it a seven microsecond pulse, but it, it's fine enough. And uh, the uh, timings are as follows here. So 0 0.693 uh, R1 times C, and uh, for T2, 0 0.693 R2 times C. So that effectively means the off time depends on R2, and the on time depends on R1, and there are these resistors respectively. So these are the values that I actually chosen for these. So R1 was about 34 kilo ohms, R2 about uh, 290 kilo ohms, and C, I chose to be 300 picofarad, uh, and then I wired it up here. The 555 timer, it'll output a pulse, and uh, the signal then echoes back, and the it will correlate with the voltage, and it goes through this integrator right here using these components, and your V out is representative of the distance. So what effectively you could do with this is put it into another analog circuit, and you could use the ultrasonic sensor without a microcontroller. That's what this does. 
Also, another thing is the uh, the echo output. As I said, if it's near, it's a lot of pulses like this. If it's far, the pulse width is bigger. So that effectively means if it's near, it's going to be off for more time, and it, and if it's far, it's going to be on for more time, uh, because it's not going down as much. Uh, so that has to do with uh, why this integrator will give you a voltage. So let's actually see that right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these two capacitors. And we are going to have to zoom in a lot on this. So let's actually uh, send it. Yeah. So here it is right here. Let's see if we could get a good shot on this. So uh, I guess we can't really. So if it's far away, you could see that this is the output. So if the distance being detected is far away, you could see that the width of these, well, it was just up here. Yeah, so if the distance being detected is far away, you could see that the distance of these is uh, longer. So like this width is going to be longer. Whereas, uh, whereas if it's shorter, like right now my hand is like right, Right next to the ultrasonic sensor. If that if this is the case, you could see that the uh, the pulses are quite a bit. They are quite a bit uh, shorter. So let me see if I could use this. So right now I'm blocking it with this uh, piece of plastic. So you could actually pause it right here. And yeah, so now you can see that the distance is going to be shorter. So. When the distance is shorter, uh, it's going to be off for more time. So it's on and it's off and it's on and it's off. Whereas if the object was farther away, it would just be on the entire time. So this means that if we integrate that uh, using these capacitors, that the voltage will be, the voltage will be lower than it would be given the other circumstance. So uh, now I put the capacitors back in and we're putting the object right there. And what you'll see, yeah, well, what you'll see is that if the object is close, it's gonna have a lower voltage. If I remove it, it's gonna be a higher voltage and I could put it in between. So right now it's real close. No, it's farther away, and now it's just at maximum distance. So yeah, you can see that using the circuit, you can uh, very simply use an ultrasonic sensor, just have a 555 timer. It has to create a pulse, and that pulse goes to the trigger, and from the echo, that could go to an integrator, and that will give you a voltage, which is dependent on the distance. Uh, one thing to note is that it's kind of rough about how uh, how accurate it is, so I think it's fairly good. So if I'm moving it farther, moving it closer, yeah, but it does kind of jump a little bit. I don't know why this happens. It probably just has to do with the object is being detected, but... Yeah, so that's basically just how an ultrasonic sensor works. Uh, I'm satisfied with the circuit for now. Uh, if I uh, create a project using this, uh, I do have another video on my channel about an uh, analog robot that I built a while ago. Uh, that was using something like this, but the, uh, the pulse wasn't set up exactly the same way that it is here, so it was probably not as accurate in the distance detection as it is here, even though it's not very accurate, uh, even right now, but yeah, so just, uh, this is just to say that you don't have to use a microcontroller for every circuit that you make, uh, even circuits that seem kind of complicated and use different parts, such as this ultrasonic sensor, you do not need a microcontroller. You can uh, learn how to use analog electronics and uh, 
create some more interesting uh, projects like this one right here. Yeah, so just uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments and other interesting analog circuits which you can make. Uh, you do not need a microcontroller for everything, and this is a demonstration of that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Uh, once again, it's quite late at night right now, so I'm going to go to bed.